For this skill, we're going to continue on along our march of recovering memories that we have lost in vector calculus and focus on how to calculate the surface integral. In the previous chapter, we, we did a little bit of practice when we were going over the, our vector review of doing volume integrals. So a surface integral is like a volume integral. There's just some extra steps and things that you need to work out. So one, the, the general idea of a surface integral, I think it, it helps if you have a little bit of intuition. But the general idea that I, I, one way that I like to view it is, you know, if, if you have a person and that person conforms to the surface exactly. So, you know, if the surface arcs, then this person also uh, moves along the surface and is staring straight down perpendicular into the surface. So this is always 90 degrees. Uh, what you want to, what one of the things that you're calculating is you're, you're taking the dot product of the surface. Uh, the surface vector is defined by all the points that are perpendicular. So that's kind of where this little person comes in. And, uh, and so you take a dot product of all the arrows going through the surface with the surface vector, and then you add them all up across the surface. So what that's saying is, um, you know, if, if this person is you know, staring into the surface perpendicular, and let's say for every unit force, the person loses a strand of hair. As you move this person across the whole surface, how many strands of hair is lost? So hopefully that, that helps you kind of understand what's going on, uh, or if it confuses you more, then disregard it. But this is kind of the visualization that, that helps me remember and make the process of calculating a surface integral more visceral. So basically, again, you're, you're kind of counting the arrows that pierce the surface. And the other thing to remember is this person loses a strand of hair only when it's coming right at, right at the person's face. And so that's what I mean by you're taking the dot product with the surface vector. And what that means is, you know, if, if you're in line with the surface vector, if you're perpendicular, then all that arrow goodness gets multiplied into the surface integral. If, however, uh, you're off by, I don't know, 30 degrees, for example, then you only get half credit because you're taking the dot product, right? So you're only looking at the portion that's perpendicular to the surface. The other portion is parallel to the surface. And so that does not, in that does not include a credit for piercing the surface, right? So you're only looking at the portion that's perpendicular and, and then you're doing that for every location on the surface and adding that up. So let's, let's look at, um, let's just go through the steps for doing a surface integral in the most generic sense. So the first thing is with all things in life is I recommend that you uh, stop and, and take a look at what the dimensions are, what dimensions are involved. So first of all is identify uh, DL1 and DL2. So stop and look at it and think about how you cover the unit area. So by DL1 and DL2, I'm referring to the fact that, uh, let's just say this is this is flat, right? So this is, uh, we'll just redraw this so it's flat, but let's just say you can, you can describe this surface through two unit vectors, right? If this is, if this is Z, this is X, and this is Y, uh, your, the two vectors that describe the surface would be DX and DY. Right, so in this case, DL1 and DL2 are uh, DX and DY. So take a look and figure out, you have three dimensions to work out of, to work off of in three dimensional space and two of those will best describe the surface. So figure out what those are and uh, make sure they're unit lengths. So if you're in a, if you're, say your, your surface, uh, say this is the Z, Z direction, if your surface is described by phi and Z, in the case of like the, the curly part, the, the uh, toilet paper roll uh, portion of the surface, so if you're looking at a toilet paper roll, so the, the description for that surface would be a combination of Z and phi, right? But remember, you need them to be unit lengths. So if one of your answers was D phi, don't forget to multiply what? That's right. Don't forget to multiply rho, right? Because this is in units of, this is in units of radian sections. What you want is it to be in units of meter, right? So you have to multiply it by the radius. 
So again, find your DL1 and DL2, and remember if it's an angle, multiply it by the radius. Uh, next step is you identify, find the direction of ds. Okay. The, so this ds is going to be a vector, and the direction of the vector is going to be perpendicular to the surface that you're integrating against. Uh, the reason that you want to find this vector is because you're going to be taking the dot product. All the arrows that are going through it, you're going to take the dot product with this ds vector, right? So if it's perfectly aligned with ds, you get full credit. If it's off, then you only get the portion that's perpendicular to it, right? So we got to figure out what direction this ds is. Uh, so there, there's two ways to do that. One is uh, by inspection, which is how we're kind of doing it in this example, where say, Oh, this is in the x, this is in the y direction, therefore ds is going to be in the z direction. Or in this case, uh, in our toilet paper roll example, uh, one is phi, the other dimension is z, and so, and so the, the direction perpendicular to the surface will be rho. So you can do it by inspection. Or another way to do it is it will always, if you, uh, in some cases, uh, you'll see that it will all you can always say that it is the cross product of dl1 cross dl2 right because these the definition by definition if you take uh the two dimensions and take the cross product you're going to get something in that third dimension right so uh so you can do this by inspection again or if you just need some mathematical way to describe it you can also just have it be the cross product of these two vectors and then Step three, you're basically there. Step three is then you set up. Uh, if, we, if let's say our so let's say this is a vector field, um, then we we take the b and then we take the dot product of ds, where ds is going to be equal to uh, dl1 times dl2 in the unit in the direction of uh, their cross product. So in in the case of this. In the case of the xy surface example, one, one example would be it would be dx dy in the z direction, right? That would be the case here. Or in the case, so I'll just write that out here, dy in the z direction, right? Or in the case of our toilet paper roll, I just like saying toilet paper roll as many times as possible in a class lecture, uh, it will be uh, d, z, d rho, rho, sorry, rho d phi dz in what direction? In the row direction, right? So this is going to be your ds. This is an, another example of finding ds. So you set that up, and then you have, you're going to have two integrals where you're going to be uh, doing, doing an integral, one with relation to you know, 1l and l1, and then the other integral is going to be in relation to l2 with the limits that define this surface here. Two more finer points I'd like to bring up. The first is we also have the notation of this. So if there is if there's a circle across this surface integral, what that means is that that means that it is a closed surface. So it shouldn't change your math, it's just an extra indication that that the limits of these give you a closed surface. So in this case, this uh, this uh, toilet paper roll, if you're if you're only doing it across that, that is not a closed surface because you still have uh, these openings on the top and on the bottom, right? But if it turns out that say you're doing an integral of a sphere and you're integrating across the whole surface of that sphere, that is a closed surface, and then and then you would uh, add this in. Or another way that you could you could indicate that it's a closed surface is say, um, say you want to integrate over the surface of a cube. Uh, this would end up being broken up into a bunch of non-closed surface integrals of all six sides of the cube. The, the second thing is uh, the convention is that ds is outward in the event that it is a closed surface. So if, you, if you're trying to find and if you're trying to add up all the arrows that are piercing through the closed volume of a cube, uh, then in that case, uh, the ds for this surface is going to be in this direction. The ds for this surface is going to be in that direction. 
the ds vector for the bottom surface is going to be pointing downwards, and the surface is going to be pointed that direction, and so on and so forth. Similarly, uh, going back to, I'll just sneak in one more use of the word toilet paper roll. If you were trying to do a closed surface of the cylinder, your ds vectors would be an integral of this circle in this direction, an integral of the bottom circle with the vector being in this direction, and an integral of this uh, rho, d phi, rho d phi dz uh, two-dimensional integral that we have in our example with the, with the surface vector pointing in the rho direction. So that is kind of, if you're ever, if it's ever ambiguous, since uh, when, when you look at this, the direction, your main criteria is that it's perpendicular to the surface. Uh, if there is ever the, any kind of concept of inward or outward, the convention is that you choose your ds such that ds is pointed in the outward direction. So as a quick summary, uh, the process is you identify two of your vectors that you're integrating over that define the surface. Uh, through the process of elimination, more or less, your, the direction of your dl1, dl2 is going to be in that third dimension, the one that you haven't used yet. So in this case, you're in the case of of the cylinder, you're saying phi and z, and so that means that the direction of ds is naturally rho, so it's the remaining dimension, or you can use inspection or take the cross product. They all end up being the same thing. And then uh, separately, uh, if you set up, once you set up the integral, you just do your, do your dot product and then do your two-dimensional uh, do your two-dimensional integral. And then separately, I'm also pointing out that you have a convention where if you have a circle here, that's referring to a closed surface. And when you do have a closed surface, if you're ever in doubt about the actual direction of ds, make sure you always choose the one that's pointing outwards.